Hey folks, welcome to another edition of Fitness Friday Positives with Rochelle, folks. The last episode of the year before my holiday hiatus. Fitness Friday is always the best day of the week, folks, and I am closing this year out with the topic of the perilous power of pretense. Yes, the perilous power of pretense. Pretense is never a good thing. <laughs> the best thing that we can do for ourselves, particularly as leaders, and it's going to take some time and a lot of personal growth to get to this point where we embrace authenticity, where we embrace authenticity. And I actually want to dedicate this final episode. It just kind of occurred to me. I'm going to dedicate this final episode to one of my former sales managers, Steve Ruchak. Uh, the very first time that he worked with me out in the field, he, he left me with some parting thoughts. And I hope he's, you know, he and his family are doing well in Michigan here. And one thing he said to me, you know, as he was about to leave and was giving me feedback for the day, for those who don't understand, you know, salespeople have field visits where your, your sales manager or sales director or someone from corporate comes out in the field because they want to get a bird's eye view. They want to understand what's going on. What are the customers saying? What are some of the challenges the reps are facing? And so we had the field visit and he left me with some parting words before he took off. So that was the first time, you know, we had, we had, we had, I had team conference calls and things like that, but that was the first uh, field visit as I stated. And he said, Rochelle, there's a few things that I've observed today. Number one, you're genuine. Number two, you are very comfortable with yourself. Number three, your leadership ability is innate. And I look back now and, and I, laugh, I laugh at myself and I've shared this on you know, Fitness Friday episodes a few years ago, I think it was, where I look back now and I, <laughs> I wish I would have had a little bit more humility in that situation to say, well, you know, it's, it hasn't been easy. It's been a real growth. It's been a, been a real growth journey in it. And it's been certainly hasn't been easy. It's taken a lot of work and a lot of uh, commitment to my own personal growth and development. But instead of that, <laughs> I said, thanks. You know, like it just came naturally to me. And so anyway, I just kind of laugh at myself about that. And so this piece about being genuine, this piece about being genuine when society and the world is trying to convince us that who we are, who we are, who we really are, taking the masks off, is not good enough. So we are going to spend some time here today talking about, I'm going to share a few examples of authenticity, I'm going to share some story times, and then we're going to wrap this year out. And so hope your holiday season is going well. And I got to kick this episode off before I forget with telling you, <laughs> somebody said to me the other day, Rochelle's got a new toy. So I've been talking about this, this thing. And again, this is not a promotional, this is not a promotional, uh, you know, spiel or anything, but in the spirit of authenticity, you know, if you've heard me speak and you've heard me talk about how I'm a late adopter. So when, when something comes out, I'm typically one of the, on the, on the last categories of, of people who adopt it or who, who buy it or purchase it or use it or try it, anything like that. So, but there are exceptions just like everyone else that we, we, we have various exceptions. And for me, I'm an environmentalist. And so the energy bridge that DTE, and hopefully you can see it, but anyway, that's what this is here. I'm gonna move it before my next filming episodes after, after the new year. But folks, let me tell you, like everybody has been hearing me talk about how much I love that, that energy bridge. And so it's at base and, and just long story short, I love that thing. <laughs> and it's amazing how it came about. It's just fascinating because, you know, I received an email from DTE and it was actually a number of weeks ago saying, okay, we have, you know, 3,000 people. We want to get signed up for this Energy Bridge program. And of course, it was a promotional offer. So we're going to give six months of free trial and a $25 Amazon gift card. And so I initially, I saw the first email and said, oh, okay, that's cool. And then I just deleted it. But then the following week, when I got a repeat of the same email, and I said, and initially when I got the first email, I said, you know what, we've got millions of people in the state of Michigan. DTE has a very large customer base. Certainly the 3,000 spots in that you know, particular promotional offer, certainly they're already taken. But then when the email came the following week, again, from a marketing perspective, you know that when you see these repeated messages, that means they have not, <laughs> they have not fulfilled the quota, you know, with all due respect. And then this happens in various categories and various companies and entities. 
And so I really took a look at it and I said, you know what, let me just check it out, whatever. Um, and so I received it and it has been, you know, a few weeks now, but I was actually saving talking about it for this particular episode because see, I'm not one to typically, again, we had the beta, there was a beta group that beta tested it, the, the you know, the, troop, the super early adopters where they were testing it and product engineers and software developers and all of that were working on it. So they were the beta testers. I didn't do that, but I'm the next phase, you know, so I'm the early rural out of this particular, uh, you know, energy bridge and folks, I have been so pleased with it. I mean, I just absolutely love it. I just absolutely love it. And so see, in the spirit of authenticity, you know, I am typically a very late adopter, but when it's something I'm deeply concerned and deeply passionate about, I will be one of the first people uh, to raise my hand. And so I just had to share that with you because now, you know, people are saying Rochelle has got a new toy. And so see, <laughs> it's not the typical toy that, that somebody may be thinking about, you know, uh, in terms of, you know, whether it's uh, somebody got, you know, a new sports car or something like that, you know, that expression, so-and-so's got a new toy, it's some, a new gadget or something like that. No, for me, it's my energy bridge and I absolutely love it, love it. So, but I just had to share uh, that with you to, to, to kind of laugh at myself and, 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 and uh, get this episode started off right within the spirit of authenticity. And last week, you saw me when I talked about you typically and I haven't talked about you know good to great I haven't highlighted that book in a couple of years so when you saw me I had to pull the hefty LSU steering wheel cover out as we talked about those three criteria that are important from an HR perspective last week and so see this is real and so whether it's me from a training standpoint from a speaking standpoint or whatever I'm very big on visuals and that's why occasionally you know you will see me pop out with something and, and, and highlight it and use it as a visual even on these particular episodes and so the Good to Great with Jim Collins, you know, I love that book. I've talked about it a number of times over the years. And like I've stated before, I'm not covering HR this year. Um, hopefully we'll cover it, you know, next year when, when things look a little bit more promising, but, but we will see, we will see. So it was very, very excited to speak about that. And so when we think about the perilous power of pretense and how, you know, being inauthentic and, and being, you know, fake and wearing masks and everybody, I don't care who you are, I don't care what your level of confidence is, everybody has struggled in this area. Because society will tell you, oh, you have to do this, you have to have this, you have to be this. And it takes a lot of strength and it takes a lot of growth, really. Um, and I can tell you that from personal experience. So just be, you know what, I'm going to do what I need to do. I'm not looking for society to say what I need to do, be and have in order to be fulfilled, in order to be successful. And once I made that decision a number of years ago, folks, it, it has been just just pure, just happiness. I mean, just truly happiness. And that's one of the most common points that people make or questions that they will ask me. It's like, Rochelle, you are the most positive person I've ever met. Rochelle, you, do you ever have a bad day? Rochelle, you know, what is your secret to happiness? And that's one of them. <laughs> being authentic, being genuine, being real. All right, and recognizing that authenticity is something that society is starved for. Being our best selves, you know, not trying to run around and imitate someone else. And that's why on these Fitness Friday episodes, I always harbor back to the point of, I want to challenge you to be your best within your own parameters. Because if you try to copy what some of the big dogs are doing and you don't have the budget and you don't have the, 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 the personnel, and it, you just gotta recognize and, and, and think about what I say. Some of it will apply, some of it won't apply, and you need to know how to you know, just toss away what doesn't apply to you and really be challenged to think about what could apply to you in terms of taking your facility, facilities, whatever the case may be, to the next level. Next level, next level, next level is so important. So that piece of being authentic and genuine. And if there's one thing certainly that you observe on these episodes. And it's certainly, you know, again, from a confidence standpoint, a, a big area of growth that I've had over the years is just recognizing that life is not a zero sum game. Life is not a zero sum game. If you, if you think it is, if you think it is, and, and you are going to just be, be one of the most miserable people, unhappily happy people, unpredictable people, because guess what? In life, we all lose and we all lose multiple times in various aspects of life and quite frankly in my opinion that's what makes life you know interesting because if we were always going like this in every aspect of life 
there's not a lot of growth in that. There's not a lot of character growth and development. And so it's the hard times, it's the valleys, it's the struggles, it's the obstacles that test our resolve and really prove if we really are who we say we are. You know, you can say, well, I'm committed and I'm gonna do everything that I can do, but then when time gets tough, when times get tough, what do you do? Do you keep on keeping on with a solid spirit of resolve or do you turn tail and run? Do you turn tail and run? And so for me, even from a, certainly from a leadership perspective, recognizing and, and just really embracing the fact that life is not a zero sum game. And next year, we talk about, we're gonna have a confidence series, probably two or three of them again next year. We're gonna talk about you know, some of the professional implications of my own confidence growth around, for me specifically, competitiveness. Competitiveness. You know, from a little girl playing multiple sports, um, I am a naturally competitive person. But I'm gonna share the very detailed story about how in 2007, <laughs> I stopped competing with other people. Keep in mind, I was a sales rep. I was, you know, I had my own territory at the time. I was in biotech sales. I stopped competing and my life has been transformed. I stopped competing with other people and in lieu of doing that, I compete with myself. So I set a high bar for myself and so I compete with myself. And what that has done has freed me up to celebrate other people succeeding their successes, encourage people, love people, pour my life into people, seeing them grow and develop and become the best versions of themselves. And if I had that competitive, super competitive spirit, that's hard to do because you will be looking in those situations like, well, you're competing with them. All right. And from a leadership perspective, it is so important for us to be able to embrace, to embrace each and every person, each and every person that we lead. And recognize, again, it is our responsibility to help them, help them evolve and reach the, the next level and be the best versions of themselves. But it's hard, hard, hard if you just have a zero-sum game and if they're shining. And we hear these stories, particularly from a leadership perspective, where a leader can't stand if anybody, any of his or her people, outshine him or her. You know, they just cannot, just, just the ego is so fragile, they can't take it. <laughs> they can't take it. They can't look at a person, their employee, and say, Man, I did, this was a wise hire. I, I really, this person is rocking it. This person is killing it. They're making me look good. But if you struggle with confidence and being secure in who you are, people excelling can be a threat to you. People can be a threat to you. And that's why, I mean, just, just you know, one of, the, one of the best lessons, you know, that I've learned and, and one of the key pillars of my happiness is being able to celebrate people, to love people, to honor people. All right, and recognize that life is not a zero-sum game. You see me here on these Fitness Friday Positives, where I talk about various, again, I'm pro-fitness, so I talk about various entities, traditional bricks and mortar, online, virtual, apps, whatever the case may be. All right, I'm pro-fitness, so I want the entire industry to feel like, succeed. I want each and every person to feel like, hey, they're able to reach the next level in whatever arena that they're operating. But again, if I come to this from the standpoint of, if, you know, it, it, and that's why you hear me harp a lot of times about just how I have to guard against favoritism. I mean, that's a huge issue in leadership. <laughs> that's a huge issue in leadership. All right. But if you realize that life is not a zero sum game, then it's going to be easier for you to acknowledge and to honor others. And for me here in these episodes to honor various entities, whether I've stepped foot in them or not, to be happy to see growth and success wherever it comes and whomever may be the person that, that's leading the success. And so that is very, very important to me. And that's why, again, we, we all have strengths and weaknesses. So for me, you know, the, the favoritism piece is, is something I have worked on hard the last several years. You know, even from a, from a, from a training standpoint, from a speaking standpoint, people can sense that. When you have favorites and, and think about a time perhaps where you've attended a training session or you've been to a, you know, a, a speaking event, and the, the, the person leading, whether it's a seminar, workshop, whatever, or a formal speaking event, how they will pick one or two people and kind of talk to them and engage them and ask questions the entire time without acknowledging other people and, and kind of broadening the, the people that they're engaging more in the process. And if you've been in that situation, you kind of sit there and be like, well, he's always calling on so-and-so, or she's calling on so-and-so, and we can make this more practical from a leadership perspective. This can happen in meetings. 
This can happen on conference calls. This can happen on Zoom calls. So we have to work hard to guard against favoritism. And so the power perspective that I kicked off with at this very first episode in this series is so important and certainly so relevant because we as leaders have to guard against that. And you see me just as a, just as a practical example here on Fitness Fridays, I have a got to guard against that. You saw me highlight kind of what I, from a, from a fitness perspective and kind of my involvement and all of that, I highlighted that last week. I've got local and I've got Shreveport Bossier and when I travel, again, why? This is something I do just naturally or in the course of every day. It's an everyday occurrence. I aggressively pursue external perspectives because they help me to remain grounded. They help me to remain, again, the zero is not a life, you know, it's the life is not a zero sum game. And that the fight against tunnel vision, where you can just be so focused on this and, and no one else matters, nothing else matters. And so I personally, I, I'm very aggressive with that. I'm very, very aggressive in terms of pursuing opportunities. And, and I think back to, and, and I just so appreciate, and I've said this to a few people in the last few weeks, is I so appreciate, you know, the, the military and their, in their, you know, obviously, yes, the, the, the men and women who serve this country uh, and around the world, they, they serve in, in various capacities at various bases overseas, but just in our veterans as well, thank them for their service, but recognizing just the beauty of, of that, that, that the military in terms of their policies and procedures and having people move every few years. And just to, the perspective, again, that you gain from moving to different places. It can be hard when you're kind of going through it. Now, again, my, my dad was in the Navy, uh, but he didn't retire from the Navy, but we, he worked on military bases. So, you know, we did some moving ourselves. And so, but just that, the, the experiences that you get and the depth of, of life and learning and experience that you get from moving around like that. New people, new bosses, new coworkers, new environments, new city. And those challenges, and again, that ability to be adaptable is so important. And I realize kind of in just how much that has really shaped me because, you know, <laughs> and I, my very first sales manager, when I first moved to Detroit, uh, Tim A, and he's in, in, in Eastern Ohio, I hope he's doing well, he and his family. But, but he said, Rochelle, you don't let grass grow under your feet. And, and part of that, again, now, you know, I totally understand. I'm just the self-actualizer when it comes to Maslow's hierarchy of needs. So I'm always thinking about, you know, uh, the, the being the best version of myself. And so for me, that's not just staying stagnant, staying in one place. You know, I'm always kind of moving around and rotating. Why? Because change has helped me grow and develop as a person. It's easy to stick with the status quo in all aspects of life, but growth and evolution occurs when change occurs. And that's why I positively embrace change. Um, and certainly I pursue it. You know, I certainly pursue it myself. And so that the zero sum game and just embracing others and for me celebrating all aspects of fitness, and uh, this past Saturday, went and had a demonstration of Tonal. You know, the Tonal, the home fitness, the connected home fitness machine. And uh, they had, I mentioned this before in a few episodes ago, they've got a distribution of 40 uh, Nordstrom locations across the country. And we actually have one location here in the state of Michigan in Somerset Mall in Troy. So I had an appointment at 3.30 on this past Saturday uh, and, and, and really enjoyed it, but learned a lot. I mean, hey, and, and again, I'm celebrating people. I'm celebrating entities, and, and Sean was making it happen. You know, six feet six. He is the he is the voice of Tonal in the state of Michigan. And so, you know, I got there at three o'clock. I didn't leave until three fifty because my appointment was at three thirty. I got there early. For those who live in Metro Detroit, but if you don't, if you live in a major city, you know just how you know large malls and the parking situation, and you don't know what it's going to be like, and it's going to take you a while to find parking. And if anybody who's been to Somerset Mall, particularly on a weekend, you know that parking situation. So it worked out well. I got there early, um, and I actually observed for the first 30 minutes and was watching these swarms of people just keep stopping and inquiring about that. And so it was just, you know, I won't turn this episode into that, but. I was happy to happy to go because again that's tonal is one of my deep dives that I'm that I'm doing you know currently in the fall of 21 on into to 2022 Ergata as well as you know the connected rower and Peloton as well as uh, tonal but so a great experience I mean and I learned so much and you, interesting enough there's a tidbit about the pricing of that of the tonal where you get the complete pricing you know is what they're showing on TV there's a little bit more to that you know um, and so because you've got to pay, you know, an extra $500 for the programs that are actually on it. Um, and then you got to pay $250 for the installation. And so, and then the membership fee, of course, on top of that. So 
That's why I always encourage people, get out. To, to, to learn, to grow, to, 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 to expose yourself to something different. And I'm just so glad that I went to that and, and, and just, you know, took advantage of that opportunity to learn about tonal. Am I going to get one? No. <laughs> but it's very important for me, again, to have that exposure and that experience because they are coming, you know, you've seen their ad campaign and their ad spending. They are coming hard. They are they're really bringing it um, in terms of their what they're doing in terms of their national ad, ad spends. And so and before that, uh, because they, like I got to the mall super early and so I went to the Amazon store um, and they have prominently featured you know Nordic track and they've got you know they've got a bike and a treadmill in there just premium location right there on the floor so they've got their own fitness section and they've got and interestingly enough they were highlighting the commercial S22i studio cycle and commercial series 1750 model treadmill so it's very interesting that they had commercial models in there in, in the store uh, you know, versus what would be, you know, your traditional kind of home, home, home based machine. So that was very, very interesting. And I, you know, stood there and you know, read the stuff and, you know, watched the, stood there and watched the video and really looked at the equipment and was the whole fitness center area and the setup. And so fitness is important. And certainly this time of year, there's, there's a lot of emphasis on, on, on fitness, but it's just things like that. Recognize it's not a zero sum game. You know, hey, I'm happy for Nordic track and, you know, hey, they, they're really, you know, involved with iFit and they've really embraced kind of the iFit platform and Tonal and, you know, we just got to be happy for other people. Just got to be, I've got to be happy. I mean, how effective am I? Am I going to be just talking about one entity? You know, and that's just kind of been my philosophy from day one and it is very important. But one way I have to do that is to expose myself so I can be happy for everyone and have the same enthusiasm and, 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 and sense of respect and honor when I walk into any facility or do anything. And so this is true in each and every season. You know, I am happy. I am a proud member of Edge Fitness. And I was actually, you know, last week, I was actually in Mount Clemens, and, which used to be my sales territory a number of years ago. So I hadn't been there in a long time. And so I'm coming home on Hall Road and I actually see, you know, the ads. And it got my attention because, you know, red is my favorite color. So I see the big billboards for Edge Fitness where they're advertising the new location and, and the traffic is kind of heavy on, very heavy on, on Hall Road. And so, you know, I was actually able to get a glimpse and say, like, oh, that's where the new Edge is. Yeah, there it is. You know, yay, go, go Edge. Um, but so happy for Edge, happy a new location. That's not my location, but I'm happy for all of them. Happy to see all of that growth. All right. And so it is just so important to, to just be able to embrace all. And I have worked hard. <laughs> I have worked hard at that. You know, because and, and, it, and, it's, and it's certainly something that does not come naturally to people because people want to just talk about whatever they're doing and their own thing, you know, and I'm just, you know, and I have to aggressively guard against that because the minute I'm talking about one entity, you know, whether it's, you know, Fit Nation, my pay as you go membership down there, you know, I got to have the same honor for that situation where I'm not there as much. You know, and other entities that exist in the area. When I walk in, as I'm doing a deep, we'll be doing a deep dive on, on D1 Fitness here in the next year. Okay, I want to need to have the same open mindedness because, again, if life is a zero sum game, you're, you're going to be tunnel vision and closed minded to, to a lot of different opportunities. And so I always want you to be successful. Um, and certainly from a leadership perspective and a confidence and leadership perspective, we've got to be open. We've got to be open to exposing ourselves, to learning, and to grow to learn it to grow and to not be threatened by the external, whatever isn't us or ours or what we're doing or what we're working on. All right. Can a parent give kudos and props to another parent's child who just killed it in a, in a, in a particular sport at the game, you know, or is it, well, that wasn't my kid. So I'm not saying anything. I mean, how much does this happen? How much does this happen in the workplace? And it's a confidence issue. It's a very big confidence issue. When you're secure in who you are, you will be able to honor and elevate people. You will be able to honor and elevate people. And you will be able to be real. And that's truly, you know, at the heart of this episode is authenticity. And, and because the, the pretense, there's perilous power in that. Perilous power in, in pretense. And you've heard me talk many episodes over the years about my love for Dollar Tree. Again, this is not... <laughs> This is not a promotional spiel for Dollar Tree, but you know, I talk about it so often. And where did that start? Where did that start? I'm going to give you a quick little story time. And you can see here, this used to hang in my window when I was a grad student in Florida. What does it spell? A to be poor. Hate to be poor. This used to hang when I was broker than broke. I was a graduate student in Miami and this used to hang in my windshield. 
This used to hang in my windshield and my love and how my love for that particular, again, retail segment was, was cemented and solidified was when I was broker than broke and I would have a few dollars and would be able to roll. And back then, remember, it was the, like the 99 cent stores. I would be able to roll to the 99 cent store and go there, the one that was close to my house. And, you know, and again, everything was 99 cents. So you could spend $10 and come out with a couple of bags full of stuff. And so, but I used to go there, you know, and it just, it meant the world to me to be able to just have a few dollars, a few extra dollars, and to be able to go to the 99 cent stores. And of course, you know, we know that the, the, the whole concept has evolved and I can get Dollar Tree, you got Dollar General, you got Family Dollar. Um, and so that whole segment has grown, but that's where it started. So I remember just the good feeling that I would have strutting into the 99 cent store. And it's just the, 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 it's the emotional attachment that I have even since then. I just, I love that segment and I'm not going to be fake and pretend that I don't love that segment. And so you are going to, you can find me in Dollar Tree. I've been to a number of them across this country. You know, many people, yeah, we all go to different tourists and, and attractions and then landmarks and things like that. But I've been to a lot of Dollar Trees and I have, there's no shame in me admitting that publicly. Uh, that's my store, one of my stores. I love it. I love it. I love it. Um, and so I just had to share that with you from when I was broker than broke. That's when it started. And I, and I still remain fiercely loyal uh, to that particular segment. And so got a couple of examples here as we talk about the importance of being real um, and, and not being in, 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 inauthentic and, and, and being people that, that are just full of pretense. Because, you know, nobody want, nobody likes a phony. Nobody likes a phony. You know, let's just be real. Let's just be real. I had a sales colleague a number of years ago, Dee Dee Crockett. Hope she and her family are doing well, but she used to say the real deal, holy field, the real deal, holy field. And so this is a, a past issue of Ink Magazine. And I saved this for a number of year, a number of months here, pardon me. So this came out March, April, 2020. So in the height of the pandemic, and I see I've got my little uh, reminder of where I needed to go. And so I wanted to quickly read here we talk about and he was he become the new you know editor of ink magazine and so it's by way of introduction so he was introducing himself at the time and i just want to read something as you talk about the spirit of authenticity and just how powerful this is and it says hi i'm scott oma leonook or as most people call me my last name being hard to spell and pronounce scott o i'm the new editor-in-chief of ink and i'm honored and to be honest a bit surprised to be talking with you now you see, being here is kind of ironic, coming as I do from a long line of failed entrepreneurs. On one side of the family, there were the relatives who treated businesses like an outlaw hobby. Keep, book, keep books, pay taxes, why do that? They'd scoff right off until the IRS came knocking. It's a wonder none of them started in the calamities featured in Adventures in Entrepreneurship, which you can find on page 56. So right out of the gate in his first introduction to readers, hey, I'm surprised to be here. I've struggled, my family's had struggles with, with the entrepreneurial journey, but just think about how disarming that was to read that right off the bat. So I said, here we have a man, and I'm certainly I'll be using, utilizing this as an example, you know, in the future, training and speaking of, uh, you know, engagements, but this is so important. This man came out from, from day one. Hey, this is who I am. Hey, I'm surprised to be here. <laughs> Entrepreneurship is hard. My family has struggled. It has not been easy. But again, that's somebody that's, that's going to be having a balanced view to understand that entrepreneurial journey is not like this <laughs> for most people. All right. It's, it's like this. There's ups and downs. There's struggles. It's, it's not easy. And that's why, relatively speaking, so few people do it. But I just had just a wonderful example of confidence and leadership as somebody who was combating the perilous power of pretense. Wonderful example. And so I have another example here. And this is from Sports Illustrated. And so what we have here, and this one came week before last here, and I wanted to highlight, and I've got it, dog ear, yeah, I've got, got my dog ear here for this one. And so here's an example, again, where they're, they're focusing the title of this article, just for full context, in the throes of change. So they're talking about the evolution of quarterbacks. And again, you're talking about what? The leader of the team, the field general. All right. And so just wanted to highlight a quick blurb here in this spirit that it speaks to authenticity. What will have happened if Patrick Mahomes had modeled his game after Peyton Manning? If he tried to stand on his tippy toes and throw the ball down like a dart, asked Stroop. 
Would you even know his name? So think about that. And, and, and just for full context, you know, I'm very big on providing all of my detailed sources. So this article in the Throes of Change was written by Connor, C-O-N-O-R, or. And so very, very powerful. December 2021. So if Kansas City's quarterback has decided, okay, well, I want to copy what Peyton Manning did. Right, Manning family, very, very prominent, very well respected in Louisiana. Very, very, very important. Trying to imitate people, trying to copy other people. What, what do they do? There's best practices, they're learning. But it's always important for us to, to take a look, to take the, the key learnings and nuggets and apply them to our situation. Does this, does this work for me? Am I natural? Does this, is this a good fit? Is this not a good fit? Because so many people fall and flounder trying to be like the next person, trying to be like the next person. And I just thought, again, from, a, from a, a quarterback's perspective, the ability to be authentic for the coaches that are working with them and developing them to recognize, well, hey, well, you know, this quarterback did this, or Drew Brees did this, Matthew Stafford did this, all right, Lamar Jackson did this. Well, well, well let me try it. All right, and, 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 and former Saints retired quarterback Drew Brees would argue, hey, he was not a dual threat quarterback, but he was elite and he succeeded based on what he was able to do and his own strengths. Whereas Lamar Jackson is a dual, is a dual threat quarterback. All right, so the, the Baltimore Ravens, two very strong, high level, top notch quarterbacks, but different styles, different abilities. So that, that, the, the notion of running around, copying and trying to imitate what other people do, no, 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 no. And so I want to highlight this here. Nothing stops Detroit. So in the spirit of authenticity and, 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 and just, I just, I just love Detroit. I love our Metro Detroit area, of course, including Washington County, which includes Ann Arbor and the University of Michigan. And so full disclosure, again, this is from the Tourism Bureau, Detroit Metro Convention Bureau, and I'm a volunteer with them. So I've had this for a couple of years in an event. They were giving these out. And so I love it. But see, this right here captured, nothing stops Detroit. But this is what won me over. When I moved here and I had, you know, I had my little plan. I was going to live in Detroit and then I was going to move to Philly for three years and then I was going to move to Boston. And so, and I just never anticipated. So again, ability in life, when you, when you recognize and you experience happiness, the ability to say, well, hey, you know what? This place is kind of cool. It wasn't on my plan long term. It wasn't on my plan, but hey, I'm going to go with the flow here. I'm going to embrace the happiness that I experience here. You know, and so this is so, so, so captured the grit and the resolve. It just won me over so quickly. I spent my first few years in Michigan in Dearborn and I loved it. Just the grit, the resolve, the, the, the city, you know, the area gets knocked down, but it gets right back up. And I just absolutely just won me over. Love, 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 loved it. So, but the ability to be authentic. So see, like if you hate where you live, I mean, it's, <laughs> it's hard. It's hard to be authentic. If you hate where you work, what are you gonna do? Put on a pla you're gonna put on a mask every day and just go in and smile and, and be fake and phony. All right, folks, let's embrace genuine, authentic happiness and let's do what we have to do to get it. Let's do what we have to do to get it. And it's so, so important. And now in the spirit, I wanna give a, a story time and actually, you know, I've talked a little bit in the last couple of episodes about Fitness Fridays and my philosophy around Fitness Fridays. And when I started doing Fitness Fridays and how it's evolved over the years and, and just, you know, the different changes and how I've grown certainly as a person, as a leader. Um, and so I want to share with you a story time and, and that occurred in month two. So this is a few years ago in month two of Fitness Friday Positive. So there's someone watching that owns a restaurant and I'm not going to reveal his name or the name of the restaurant is it. This person, an awesome guy, um, he's a good friend of mine, and said to me, you know, he's you know, been tuned in since day one, but said to me in two, month two of Fitness Friday, and it's also, you know, it works out on that kind of stuff. So tuned in to Fitness, Fitness Friday Positives in month two. We had this conversation because he said to me, you know what? Like, man, you know, if you did something like this for restaurants, you know, I would be all over it, and me and my staff would be all over it you know, every week. And I said to him, and again, this is a, a wrapping up the series or is in wrapping up the year on the importance of confidence and leadership. And I said to him, are you sure about that? I don't, I don't, I don't know if that would be such a good idea. And I said, 
you, you really think that, that you really think you'd be able to handle that? And he said, well, yeah, well, well of course. And we had this conversation and again, it, it, and then this is a, a very big, you know, I do and I design case studies and, and my training and all that kind of stuff. And this is a, a very important case study. And, and so I never talk about case studies on these, but this is, a, this is, I'm making an exception for today because it is so important and there's different dimensions to this, but we're gonna look at confidence and leadership and then HR. And then I said, well, you know, are you sure about that? Because my biggest concern is if you would have the confidence to be able to handle that, to be able to handle that. You say you and your staff, <laughs> if, if I was doing a restaurant type of, you know, weekly thing like this um, series, what would you, are you sure? Are you sure you would have the confidence? Because do you understand the, the, my approach? Do you understand my commitment to objectivity? Do you have a confidence to be able to handle where very rarely, because again, I'm controlling and I'm guarding against favoritism, very rarely would I talk about your restaurant. And if you've been on Fitness Friday since day one, very rarely, very rarely do I talk about my own individual gym. Whether that has been here, you know, Powerhouse Gym, when I first, first started out in, in Bel Air Fitness, which I had in Louisiana, very rarely, because I'm guarding, I'm controlling against it, I'm guarding against favoritism. So I'm not going to be sitting here talking about my gym every week. I am not a promoter. So you got to understand when you say that, oh, we would be all over that. <laughs> Are you sure? And I, you know, we had this, you know, this, this really good conversation because you, I said, you got to understand, I've got to be objective. I'm not a promoter. Nobody, you know, nobody's watching this so they can hear me talk about, you know, in that particular case, no one would, you know, if you need to do commercials if you want to sit here and talk about your, if you want me to talk about your restaurant every week. You know, there's a very big difference. You got to understand this is a professional, this is an extension of my professional brand. So there's a very important, there's a very important commitment that I have to objectivity. So you have to picture me on the sidelines and you got to have the confidence to be able to watch this every week, knowing I'm rarely going to talk about your facility. So it, 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 you've got to have the confidence to understand that I am pro whatever it is. So I'm going to be balanced and I aggressively pursue external perspectives. So I'm going to be talking about a lot of other restaurants all the time. As in this particular Fitness Friday Positives, I talked about a lot of gyms over the years. And you've got to have the confidence. You've got to understand to be able to handle that. Because if not, you will feel bad about yourself. You will feel like, oh my God, she you know, never talks about my facility. No, she never talks about my restaurant in that incident. No, but I've got a commitment and I have a responsibility to highlight others. You know, people are learning to hear about others, you know, not just yours. And you've got to have the confidence to be able to, 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 to understand that. And if you don't, it is going to be a struggle. You will feel bad. <laughs> it, it will, 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 and it's going to you know, from a from an HR perspective and actually have a case study designed around this, you know, from this conversation, powerful. And the name of the case study is wake up. It's an HR nightmare. Whereas when he said to me, me and my staff would be tuned in every week. And I said, <laughs> I don't think you want to do that. I don't think you want to do that. And so there's nothing that makes HR professionals ears perk up like, problems <laughs> that are going to lead to turnover because again what is the what is what is the role of HR to protect the interests of the company all right this was an individual restaurant owner so there was no HR so again the power of perspective that I talked about in the first episode you got to understand from an HR perspective you know yeah you're an individual you you own your own restaurant but from an HR perspective you got to understand the challenges with that why, why unsanctioned training, so that's exactly what that is, you, you having your people every week, that is unsanctioned training. All right, that's why training needs to be approved by HR. That's why, you know, there's HR typically, again, I'm a business part partner for HR. So there needs to be some understanding of what it is. And HR standing, HR needs to be part of that conversation. Because, you know, something that I say, if they're concerned about protecting the interests of the company, and there's something that I'm saying that, that maybe from a consulting standpoint, you know, in, in from the from you know, and just kind of different perspectives on an issue, you know, they need to be aware, they need to be aware of that. And you know, and again, like how demoralizing could it be if your restaurant staff is, you know, they didn't sign up for that. You gotta think about it again, the power of perspective. You as an owner, you got tunnel vision. You gotta understand what people people wanna just come to work, do their jobs, and go home for the most part. 
Yeah, you're going to have people that are going to be like, oh, I want to be in management. I want to be an owner myself. I want to take things to the next level. Yes, those are the people that are going to be like, oh, yeah, you know, no problem. I'm going to learn. I'm going to grow and develop. But come on, we've all been there. People just want to go to work, do their jobs, and go home. And so in the, in the minute you do, and this is a whole separate case study that I'm not going to get into regarding this, is the minute you do that, you are telling, the minute you tell your, your staff, okay, I want you to watch this, and particularly on a permanent basis, what you're saying is, and what you're telling them whether you mean to or not, is you're not good enough. You're not good enough. And that's why training, and, and this is why this is, again, an HR nightmare. <laughs> they, will, they will agree. They will concur. Things going on that they don't know that's going on that's impacting their people and potential uh, you know, uh, employee retention and turnover issues. You know, how, you know, got to think about how that makes someone feel. Because that's exactly what you're saying. And that's why training is something that, I mean, you need buy-in from training. I mean, you need buy-in in terms of training needs from, from management as well as the, the, the staff. And it's just something, and there's something, you know, trainers, you know, we have to come in, you know, with a level of humility. We have to come in and, and just recognize what our role is and recognize many people don't like training. They're resistant to training. You know, and so kind of forcing people again in a restaurant situation or any situation that don't really, I mean, they, they, can't, they don't have a say. They work for you. They don't want to lose their jobs. You know, and that's why this is so powerful. So, and, and that's always kind of my goal is that you take some key learnings, you take some nuggets, you integrate them based on what your situation is. But you also let them know that, you know, hey, I've, I've really been kind of thinking about, you know, some, implementing some new ideas and some, you know, leadership strategies and things like that. And then you take it and you run with it. That's always my hope. You kind of take this and you run with it, you apply it to your situation and you lead. Because from, I talked about the power of accountability last week. So if, 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 you're, if you're making your restaurant staff, if this, this guy was making his restaurant staff watch every week, from accountability standpoint, are you leading the people or am I leading the people? So think about that. You, you want to you wanna undermine your leadership? Do something like that. You want to lose some respect? They may not say it to you, but it, it, they, that changes things. That, that, this is a very big blind spot, and I, and I want you to be aware of this. And so, and, and, and he finally concluded, that, that you know what that, that, that you know you know you're right I, I didn't really think about that and I said and you know in your case yeah you look at that and you said well yeah well, you know this is kind of free you find it inspiring you find it challenging and it helps you to go to the next level but will they <laughs> call up any you don't have an HR person call up an HR consultant and talk to them and see what they think about this you know they will agree that that, that no you know they can help you design, design you know, design training and and, and 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 things like that. You know we can, you know, some some design folks, some curriculum design folks, that can make that happen for you. But you just have to think about the impact of what you're doing. And if someone struggles with with not feeling good enough already, and then now all of a sudden you're telling them, you're, you're putting them in a situation where they feel like you know nothing I ever do is right. What kind of message are you sending when you do that? And so that's why I love what I do, because I can kind of, you know, he was kind of looking at me initially, was like, well, you don't think it's a good idea that I, me and my staff would watch this? No, because I'm only interested in helping people that want to be helped. People that, and again, I've been down this road myself, folks, you know, I'll be the first one to tell you, we can't, can't help people that don't want to be helped. And so you think about the people that raise their hand and say, well, okay, well, I'm going to take things to the next level. I want to do this. I want to do that. But, but this is an HR nightmare. And in HR people, <laughs> you know, I'm a prior member of the Detroit Society for HR Management for a few years. I was on the membership committee and then time commitments and, and just from a time management perspective, I had to let that membership go. But I certainly miss that organization deeply, but they taught me so much. I'm so grateful to that organization, you know, because I, again, as a trainer and consultant, and, you know, I've got to be aware of blind spots and I got to be able to be a balance and objectives and recognize balance and objective and say, OK, here. How is this going to impact this? And that's why I have the insight to have been able to look at that situation and say, man, you don't want to do that. <laughs> don't put your people through that. It's highly disruptive. All right. And then you're going to put them into a situation where, again, they're trying to placate you. And all of a sudden they're trying to do all this stuff they wouldn't normally do. You know, again, being authentic and then putting on a mask and, and being full of pretense, trying to placate you and keep their job. Just not a good situation, folks. Listen to me. Think about what you are doing. It is so important. Again, people, again, in today's economy with the job market like it is, or whether we have, you know, record low unemployment, it doesn't matter what the situation is. People are your most valuable asset. And I'm going to be the first person to tell you that. I, I, I'm all about what is best for you. I'm all about what is best for you. 
before I close this episode out again in the spirit of authenticity and just reinforcing what I just said is one of my favorite books and I highlighted this in my confidence series here a couple months ago where I concluded that series by talking about some of my favorite books you know from a spiritual and religious standpoint and certainly from a secular non-religious standpoint one of my favorite authors Dr. Henry Cloud and I highlighted this book called Never Go Back. One of my favorites, one of my favorites, 10 Things You'll Never Do Again. And chapter three, what does it state? Never again try to change another person. So think about that when you're, when you're trying to help people that don't wanna be helped, when you're trying to get people training where you know, it hasn't been sanctioned and hasn't been designed. Think about what your, your behaviors are communicating to other people. You know, we, we have to accept people as they are and we have to recognize, you know, trying to change someone can cause them to, to react out of pretense and just telling you what you want to hear and try to be who you want them to be, but it's not going to last. And again, in that type of situation, as I said, you know, a few weeks ago, someone with some confidence in that situation is going to be gone. Like this person doesn't doesn't appreciate me for who I am. I'm never what I whatever I, whatever I do is never good enough. It's a constant hamster wheel of trying to please this person, folks. This happens professionally, relationally, in friendships, everything. We have to accept people as for who they are. I mean, this is again, you 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 can hire someone and then all of a sudden you know they're they're just not who you you know you all of a sudden you hire somebody and then you try to turn them into a certain person and it's just not who they are. Relationally, we have to accept people going into it trying to change people. Okay, women, can you can you raise your hand with me, ladies, and say like, have you ever tried to change a man in a relationship? Yes, <laughs> I've been there myself. I'll be the first person again in the spirit of authenticity to tell you that I've been there. I've been the person, folks. I've been there. I'm keeping it real with you right now. I've been the person where I think I see somebody with oh, well, they would benefit from a book on this. Like, you know, I'm a voracious reader, and then all of a sudden I'll buy them a book on that subject. You know, again, helping people that don't want to be helped, who didn't ask for help. All right, so you have to think about that. People change when they want to change. We all change when we want to change. And so just recognizing the power of what you do. We don't want to set people up for pretense. We don't want to, particularly as leaders, we don't want to set people up for pretense. We want them to be real. We want them to be authentic because they will be happy. They will stick around. And so that's what we have to do, folks. And so I want to close this episode out and close this year out before holiday filming hiatus with yes yet another dollar tree purchase folks that emphasizes the importance to just be you let's all negate the perilous power of pretense by being real as individuals as leaders let's commit to finish this year out let that be one of your goals we can all grow in the area of leadership confidence. It's so important, but authenticity and combating pretense is a very big obstacle that we've got all got to overcome. It's going to take a lot of growth. It's going to take a lot of commitment and a lot of development, folks. So that is all I have for you today. This has been a blast. <laughs> this has been a wonderful year, wonderful filming year. So I cannot wait to come back with you in 2022 and beyond, folks. So continue to strive and be the best you you can be in 2022 and beyond. Thanks so much for your time and make it a wonderfully fit day.